All right, folks, this is going to be a video on how to set up and break down the MIG welders in the Tyler uh, metal shop. We have two welders, the 350P and the older 250, and this is not a technique video. This is just a video on how to turn them on and turn them off safely uh, and what some of the different parts mean. Um, in order to use any piece of equipment, you're going to want to make sure that you get cleared by an instructor. Uh, never use a piece of equipment that you have not been cleared on. First thing we're going to do is turn on the machine, which I already did down there. Next, you're going to ease open this gas cylinder. It's a high pressure cylinder, so make sure that you open it all the way. Different than the acetylene. Uh, make sure that you have a reading on this tank, uh, on this regulator valve. This will tell you that we have gas in here, so that's good. If the needle's all the way down to zero with the tank open, then time for a new bottle of gas. Always ease that open to start uh, so that you don't hammer the regulator. The next thing you're gonna do is uncoil your cables. In this case, we're gonna start with our ground clamp. I'll give you a better shot of this. Um, so we're gonna uncoil our ground clamp and we're going to hook that directly up to the work that we are welding or uh, if your work is um, in contact with one of these metal tables you can hook that ground clamp directly up to the metal table. Next you're going to uh, uncoil the MIG welding lead, the MIG gun, and you never want to kink these lines. All right? Notice how they were draped loosely over the machine there. If you uh, kink this line, you're going to have wire feed issues later on. There's a lot going on on these things, so always loosely um, coil and uncoil those. Now we're going to figure out what our settings are going to be for the machine. So we're going to go over to this chart over here uh, on the wall, and we're going to note that um, there's two different charts, one for each machine. We've got the uh, 350p on this side and we've got the 250 on that side slightly different what you're going to do is set it to the thickness of the material you're working with and I've got a couple of different material thicknesses here to take a look at so that we can see uh, what we're what our chart parameters are set at so right now I've got it set at 18 volts um, and 260 wire speed on the 350p that is assuming that you're going to do a T fillet weld that would be a weld in this inside corner here uh, on flat plate for eighth inch. Now, if I was going to set the machine for quarter inch, that would assume that the material is again the same flat plate, quarter inch material, super beefy, right? What switches up a lot of students is they assume that they can set the machine at quarter inch when they're using this really thin quarter inch pencil rod. So if you're going to try and make this uh, weld at the same setting you have for this super beefy plate, you're going to blow your, your bits of pencil rod apart. This can handle a lot more heat than this can. So you're probably going to want to set something like uh, the quarter inch pencil rod closer to like an eighth inch, let's say. So your chart parameter is assuming it's big flat plates in T fillet weld positions. So you're going to change those settings depending on what you're welding. That's just a good starting point for what you're doing. All right, some other things we have to look at here is the uh, nozzle um, of the machine, the nozzle dip, and the MIG pliers. So here's the uh, gun that you're working with uh, on the welder, and we have these uh, nozzle dip here, anti-spatter dip. You always uh, use that when the, the nozzle is hot. Right now it's cold. And you also have these MIG pliers that live in that same uh, holder. You can see that there's another set over there for the other machine. These are set up so that as you feed out wire and need to trim it invariably, they have some cutters on there. Um, so here's the cutters. And uh, the thing that makes life a lot easier is there's a recessed portion to that cutter. When you hold that flush up against your nozzle and then trim your wire, that's a good stick out starting point for when you're welding. So. Uh, that's just a, a nice handy tool. Sometimes you need to clean out the spatter on the nozzles and they're hot or they're screwed on there too tight. So this area allows you to screw the nozzles on and off. This is cold so I can still handle it. You also have the smaller one up here to remove and change out tips if need be. So we usually keep a few spare tips in the door on the machine. 
So that's what the MIG pliers do. Oh, and when this guy gets a little bit gunked up with spatter, you can just kind of uh, reach in here, hitting the trigger there, uh, and clean out any excess spatter. So a handy tool for uh, servicing your um, MIG gun. Welpers, MIG pliers, that's generally what they're called. Okay, so let's set that guy down here. At this point, you're welding and everything's hunky-dory. Now let's assume it's time to break this down. So the way we're going to break down our machine, remember this isn't a technique video, this is just a how do I turn it on, how do I turn it off without breaking it. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is turn off the gas valve. So all the way, turn that off. We can leave the regulator setting. Uh, if you ever wanted to figure out what your gas setting is, it's this knob here and you do that with the presser, uh, trigger depressed and um, you see that little ball float around. If it's floating around past 20 or 30 CFM, it's too much and you'll want to dial that back. The next thing is you're going to loosely coil your cables up. You see how this cable just kind of wants to naturally sit like that in those loops? That's fine. I'm not going to force it artificially into uh, different loops. But once that's um, uh, coiled up nice and loosely. We can also coil up our ground clamp. At any point you can turn the machine off here. We'll do the same thing with the ground clamp. Nice and loose, but notice how it's off the floor. And uh, this allows you to um, sweep up any debris, uh, clear off any table you might be working on, and um, make sure that everything's powered down properly and leave it in good shape for the next person who comes after you.